Hello, hello. It's Reiko Kovacen here, starting the live in about three minutes. Well, I started live, but I'll, I'll start the, making the project. Then let me just check that it's it's sending. Yeah, it seems at least. I can see it in the group, so now that there's a delay, just let me know if you can see and hear. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Heidi. Kiitokset. I will add the blog link to the chat as well, in case you want to check hey there some of the materials why I work then you can check them there I have links to mixed media place in everything that was well that was on stock when I made the post some time ago but yeah, hello, hello, good evening or day, depending where you are. Here in Finland, we have had a marvelous weather, about 24, 25 degrees Celsius on the plus side, not on the minus side. So it's been really wonderful and sunny day. We had headed to the beach and I put all the, all the things ready before we left. So no hassle. At least I hope I put everything. But luckily I'm crafting in our living room. So my huge craft room, aka corner, is right there. So if I miss something I can then just go and grab it. A couple of words in Finnish because there's Finns here as well. Elikä heipä hei! Kiitoksia kun tulitte seuraamaan. Pääasiassa tosiaan hölpöttelen Englanniksi menemään, mutta kuten normaalisti, niin kysymyksiä saa esittää suomeksi, jos mä vaan vastaan niihin kummallakin kielellä, sekä suomeksi että englanniksi. Ja, ja. Mm, hyvä keli, mitä olette tänään tehneet? I was asking what the things have done today. So, what have you been up today? Has it been... Sunny, has it been a good weather? Have you been crafting or making projects? Hey, hey, Kati. A couple of more minutes and then we start. Today I'm doing just mini assemblage thingies, mini projects on top of chipboard frames. These little, I call them pipeline fairies, because they have wings and pipelines. They are the little creatures that make the pipelines like clank and clutter and make noise. So they are a little bit mischievous creatures, not the cuddly and lovely kind. Hey Mia! Okay, now it's 8 o'clock here in Finland, so we'll start. So, again, we are remaking these. So a couple of little projects today. I'm using my favorite casting medium, aka hot glue, to make the pipelines, and then some crackle paste, some wax, and some old book pages. So, let's get started. I'm using these AB Studio chipboard frames as my base. There's two in the pack, but now there's only one because I was, well, I was thinking to play it safe and already treated the other one with the crackle paste. So should this other one be still wet when I'm trying to put everything together? No worries, because I have then the other one hey, Dorota, to tackle. So the first thing, because these are a light colored chipboard, 
I'm just adding the white crackle paste straight on top. If this would be dark and you wouldn't want that dark to be seen in any places, then give it a coat of white gesso before. But in this case, I'm covering the whole thing and it's a light color. So if I miss a little spot, it doesn't matter that much. As you can see, I'm using the palette knife to apply the crackle paste on top and I'm trying to go for different th thickness of the layer so where the layer is thicker there's going to be bigger cracks in the paste and where I have just a teeny tiny thin layer teeny tiny bit of the medium then it's going to get tiny cracks. So I'm kind of like icing a cake or buttering a bread. And that's it. I'll put this aside so it can air dry just there. It's better to leave it air dry than use a heat tool because the cracks get a lovely and like bigger cracks appear when you don't heat dry it. If you are in a hurry and are satisfied with just little cracks, let me try to get it there, then it's okay. But if you want these chunkier, whoopsie daisy, no, it's off, yeah, chunkier things, then just leave it air dry and you get bigger and lovelier cracks. So that's the first thing, just covering the frame part with the white crackle. Then I'm adding something to the middle. Let's put that one there so you can see the finished version. And for that I'm using old book paper and double-sided adhesive sheet. I could use also Finabar gel like the soft body versions for this but especially during a live this one is faster you don't have to wait for the medium to dry i don't need to heat dry it hey Kriske. i hope i said your name right sorry if i didn't so you don't have to wait for this to dry. I can just apply it there and it's fine. Then that one there. I'm actually add this to the wrong side because now there's flowers, but that doesn't matter. Probably we are going to add the pipelines plumbing parts on top anyway. And let's trim the excess off. Non-stick scissors would be great for this face, but it's okay. If you do art journaling, then you could use these excess for that, kind of the making the blank white page and stick this one first there and then let the process begin with a funny looking little frame piece in, in the journal. I'm just tucking them to the bin for now, but I might get Get them out after the live. So easy covering with the book page. And it's a neutral color, so you can then layer anything on top. 
Other option would be, of course, doing your own pen and paper or using pen and paper for this. Then let's make the embellishments as they need some, well, not drying time as such, but cooling time. I have some here, just in case, again, we don't want to wait too long, but I wanted to show you the process this time. So this is a Finnebar mold, pipelines, I guess. Let me just quickly check the name. What is the name of this mold? Sorry, it's way down there. Rusty Pipeline, that was the name. And then I just have a hot glue gun. And what I do is just fill the silicone mold with hot glue. It's really easy. When the glue comes out of the gun, the pistol, then it's clear. And when it's cool enough to get out of the mold, it turns into this milky kind of, not white, but milky kind of shade. Hey, Annemarie. The same thing with the little facets, faucets. Sorry, my English. But these things, you can just add it there. They don't look like much when they come out. Just this whitish color. But the uh, beauty in them is, well, the same as with resin, for example, that you can then use whatever medium to make them whatever your project needs. If you need rust a bit, you can add first gesso and then some rust paste on top, or if you want the shiny silvery versions, you can then paint them with acrylic silver paint or even add the flakes, metallic flakes to them. The only thing you need to remember is that they are hot glue. So if you then uh, are making a project and want to speed the drying with using a hot gun, a heat tool, then they might start melting. So that's a handy thing to keep in mind. Also because of that, I added a layer of gesso to some already. So again, you don't have to wait and I don't... I'll try to avoid using the heat tool this time, so these ones won't melt. When you put a layer of gesso on top, it holds the shape a little bit better than without it, but still, just keep that in mind that it will melt if you overheat it. Then these will need to be cooling so I'll use these ready-made parts. At this stage let me just think a little bit how I'm going to put the plumbing parts here so I'll know which ones to paint. Let's put... and then the frame comes but maybe do like this version that's already in the sample, so it was like this, then a piece of there, and like that. So I need this one 
painted. These are already done. And then for this one, maybe another this one, then a little bend. Oh, and maybe we use this one as well in here. So I'm thinking we can cut this one in half. Another fun thing with using just hot glue, it's really easy to cut pieces out with just regular scissors. Shall I put well, maybe I'll paint those as well if I should need them. And then I need these little, little screw heads. Whoops, it has it. Let's put another layer for those. I move this aside so I don't stick anything on top and then it will be there permanently. <laughs> To turn these not so great looking white ones into these copper toned plumbing parts, I start with black gesso. It gives a nice surface for the wax coming on top and also acts as like a shadow in the parts where Maybe I don't get the wax. And also when making these plumbing parts, there's a little kind of grainy texture in the mold. And when you add then the wax on top, it kind of reveals that one better. I actually painted those come on, in two runs. First the other end and then the other end. Maybe a smaller brush would be handy and cover the whole table. But I'm going to be painty all over. It doesn't matter. When I'm painting these parts, I'm also painting the ends. So if I then use one of these as the last bit, it doesn't bother like it's white. It's great contrast, but rather have it black as the kind of inside of the tubing. So I'm just quickly adding a layer of black gesso on top and turning my fingers black with black gesso at the same time. These one are the fiddliest part. The little screw heads. They turn out so wonderful when you add the, the, the wax on top. If you have these, like the really annoying strings from the uh, hot glue, there is uh, like there you can have a use of the heat tool because if you quickly heat this up just like a whiff with the heat tool the little strings will melt and they don't bother you anymore I should have painted these little screw heads earlier like but now you need to see me fiddle with those a little bit so we can have the finishing touches to the then ready pieces. Mm. 
now that I'm painting these, it's a perfect time to ask questions if you have any about this project or any phenobar medium or, well, anything really. Oops, Daisy. It was definitely handy that I painted some of these beforehand. So I'm thinking I have enough of the plumbing parts. If I then realize that I need more, well, I have some extra there. And then we have the ones I just made. I can then turn into... Whoops, now I put the jar away too fast. Because I can then add a little bit of the black heavy just so here to the edge, kind of highlighting the shape, almost like inking the edge, but keeping it with the same mediums I already have in use. And because this is heavy gesso, so you are able to kind of make a dry brushed little edge without getting the whole thing black. Uh, Chris K is asking that uh, what was the first thing she missed the beginning? Crackle paste from Finnebar and apply it with a brush on the frames. Yeah, otherwise just that. It was white crackle paste I applied, but with a palette knife. So there's a heavier layer and no brush marks in there. So I'm kind of like icing a cake or or buttering a bread, kind of. So there's heavier layers in places and thinner layers in places. And because this is white, well, light color, not white color, uh, chipboard, I was able to just add the crackle paste immediately without waiting or wanting to add a colored layer underneath. But if you're working with a, let's say blue, for some reason, you want to turn a plastic blue frame into this, then I would add a layer of white gesso underneath. It might be a great little effect to have the blue then peeking through the cracks, but if you have then a light colored, white colored surface to begin with, it's easier because then you don't have to worry about the layer thickness. Kati kysyy sellaista, että kun noin vanhoihin tulee sellainen harmaa pinta, että mistä mahtaa johtua, noin ne ottanut lastalla niitä. Uh, se harmaa pinta on itse asiassa, että se erottuu se vaha. Eli se on osa sitä vahaa. Että sen voi sekoittaa sinne takaisin. Katsotaan, onko tässä nyt. No tässä on vähän täällä. Mutta tästä voi vaan niin napata suoraan, niin sieltä tulee se väri. Mä en ikinä ota siis sitä itse pois, vaan nappaa vaan tuosta sormella. Että ei ole hometta, vaan siis se on se vahan, niin kuin, mikä erottuu. Kati was asking about this grayish thing that happens with the waxes. And it's the wax kind of separating from the color, if that makes any sense. So you can then just mix it up or what I do usually, I'm just using my fingers and tapping from what on top of it and it's fine. Now I actually need the heat tool to dry these little splashes I put here. But 
And then let's move these aside so we don't have black puddles of piping there. Joo, samoin mä tykkään kyllä näistä, näistä vahoista, ja ne on siis kestävät, tai siis riittoisat, sanotaanko. Nämä on edelleen niitä ihan ensimmäisiä vahoja, mitä Finnabar, niin kuin silloin tekijä tuli Primalta, niin edelleen käyttökuntana. Ja mitä se nyt on, siis varmaan kolme vuotta, edelleen enemmän. Uh, Kati says that these are her favorite waxes, that are my, my, uh, my favorite as well, and they are so... Like, they go a long way, because this jar, for example, is from the first uh, release that Finnabar came out with the waxes, and it's still going strong. Uh, I mean, what's it, three years, four years, and still. Hi, Cindy. Yeah, you can enjoy this later. I'm hoping at least that it will be recorded and then I'll put it on my YouTube channel as well. Should be okay. So now we have the edge and the splashes and the little pieces. Again, they don't look like much. A little bit more than these whitish like anything but just wait for the wax. And now I have two long nails for this one. It's especially when I was doing the samples, I loved the little grain that appeared into these pipings. Or pipe, what are these? These parts. So you can ha all have that little bit of texture showing there, for example. So I'm just usually using my finger to apply the wax. If it's, um, how do you say, debossed surface where I actually can't get my finger to, then I use the rigid brushes, but usually I'm just using my finger because mostly this is the kind of finishing touch, something coming on top. So it can only touch the highlights, which I'm able to do with my finger. The other fun part with using your own finger is that, well, your finger is warm, so it melts the wax a little bit. Now that it's summertime here in Finland and the northern hemisphere, it's probably warmer anyway, but still, it makes it easier to apply. So now I'm just going over with the pipeline elements and turning them from the matte black into these coppery, is that the word, elements. I can't get to every little nook and creek and corner, but that doesn't matter because that kind of highlights the dimensional thing and gives it a little bit of rustic feel. Then the little squids and these are the plumbing parts still. I find it really handy that the mold has 
all the parts, like the bigger pipeline, straight thingies, and then there's these corners and the faucets. So you can build your own composition, whatever you kind of are trying to achieve, if it's a bigger network of pipes or then just a little couple of details. Just a couple of more and then two other applications. The other frame is a little bit wet still looking so I might need to finish just one of these but there's still time for it to dry so let's be hopeful to get both done and not just one. Last one. Now that's all the little pipe parts and then I'm also treating these little wings kind of matching the colors so I'm giving these a little rub of the wax so they go nicely with the copper tones as well And this one is the ready-made dry version. So what I did here to turn this bright-ish white into kind of more grungy version is just to go over with the wax. So as the cracks are dimensional, like I was telling earlier, this is the way you can just highlight the raised points. And it gives it a little bit of that worn look. It's copper, but when it's on top of this white, it kind of makes it look a little bit dusty or, or weathered. So the same product in two different surfaces and totally different look. Yeah, this one is still too, too wet for me to add anything. As you can see, there's no cracks appearing in the thicker parts. They will appear and they will be like this, like a bigger cracks, but we need to leave it to dry for a while. I continue with one of these and if when I get that one done, that frame is then ready to be used, then let's do the other one. Now we need to combine these two. And for that, I'm really kind of... Come on. You came from there, or maybe we'll try this one if there's a little bit of difference between the two. I tried to get all of the paste away. Here we go, just a little bit more. So as this is quite tight, what I did with the sample project, this was just to add a little bit of tape to the other side to kind of make it one piece. If this would be a card or something that would be handled, then of course mounting this to something to carry the weight would be good, making sense, but as you can see, it's a just with a couple of pieces of tape. One 
wanting to try just one more thing. I'll put it this way. If it will fit better. Because when it came out of the packaging, it was just the right size. Now there is some of the paste dried, even though I tried to clean it. Well, let's go with that. There's going to be dimensional things on top anyway, so it will be okay. This is just kind of holding it in place because some of the pipe work also will adhere to both the frame and the center so it will be good. Then we need to add wings to the character and make the tubing. Okie dokie, which, which one of these lovely ladies and gentlemen we are going to make a fairy? Maybe her? And maybe him? They are little fairies. For that we need some adhesive. I'm almost all out with my heavy body gel, but still a little bit of lift, so we are okay for these. I'm just adding some gel to the wings and then placing them here. Then let's make a placement for the fairy to be sitting on, to be perched. Because we need Quarter of one and then another part here. I'm mimicking this one. And then one more. Then again some of the gel. And let's adhere the piping in place. I used to like using the 3D gel the most, but nowadays I'm the heavy gel fan because it kind of stays put more easily than the 3D gel because it's thicker, so you kind of get this idea of at adhering, adhering <laughs> immediately, so it feels like it, it will stay there, like so, then I'm closing the lid for now, so it doesn't dry. As you can see, there's some differences still, still between this one and this one, and it's the tapes and then some coloring. Why I didn't add the tape before is, well, just because, in a way, and also that I'm saving a teeny tiny bit of tape doing it like this because there's no tape underneath the plumbing. But of course, you could add the tape before so it will be a little bit easier. This tape is medical tape 
from pharmacy I like this beige colored cotton tape and add as its fabric it gives a nice little texture to the project and also it picks up the color differently than the other tape I'm going to use just a little piece of there I'm cutting it a little bit sh like thinner to fit the scale of the project better Then there, let's keep that one for the other one. And then this is just painter's tape or masking tape, like this paper kind of. Then a neutral color so everything will go nicely together. Kind of these vintage tones in the background and I'm just filling the composition or the background a little bit so it's not as raised or or like in your face as the plumbing but there's a something a little extra in there besides just the uh, old book paper. Then we need some watercolor. This could be um, liquid acrylic as well or even spray inks. This was just something I grabbed when doing the samples. I think I put this set in there but I Pick the two. This is Tropicals, my favorite Prima, Prima watercolor set. And the other one, this one has some copper tones, for example. So these, this is Decadent Pies. But again, it could be any watercolor. Just a little bit of that copper tone and let's mimic that there was some of that pink as well as you can see from here the painter's tape kind of mm, resist the color whereas the medical tape just absorbs everything so it's a darker tone there and I like it it gives a nice variation to the whole project a little bit of that purple to add some darker touches there and a little bit of darker blue Kind of going for that blackish oily color tone. Here we go. Then just a couple of more things. And let's see if the other frame is then dried for me to finish it or then. You need to wait and see it on my blog later on. Now I need to find a piece of book paper or, or, or cardstock. Sorry, I need to fetch. And
because that one there is just thinner bar stamp on top of book paper, kind of keeping the color scheme cohesive. So it's the same, same old book paper tone. Okay. Then where did I put my scissors? There they are. These don't have to be perfect, but it may be a bit smaller. So, which one we are going to use for this Just Create or then Less Perfection, More Authenticity? Good afternoon, Carmen from Mexico. I'm really quickly adding Just a little bit more. I don't dare to dry that puddle because I'm afraid that these hot glue embellishments will start melting if I use the heat tool too much. But a little bit so they won't soak up the color. Shall we put him or her in this version? I'm thinking we'll put in her there. She'll be perched here. And then the little screw heads are the same. Let's see if she will be okay with this or if we need to put some. Yeah, she'll be okay. Just a little bit upward so she would be actually sitting on top of the tubing. There. I'm thinking I'm using this longer phrase for this one. Just a teeny tiny touch of the gel for this one as it's paper, it's not heavy. There. And then we can finish with the little screw heads. And now that these are going in, or card. I'm thinking or hoping at least that they don't look like hot glue embellishments anymore. The mediums have transformed them and well it's really easy to make these. You just need to wait for a little while for the glue to cool down and as long as you have the mold and glue sticks, it's kind of hot glue sticks that is, you have kind of endless supply of embellishments then. Here we go. Let me show you the hot glue versions we made together if they are ready to be taken out of the mold. Yeah, they are. So it's just this easy. When they have turned into this milkish or kind of whitish, translucent white color, then they are cooled enough for just be taken out. And then you can 
paint them with gesso or use rust paste or or the metals or acrylics just kind of your imagination is the only only restriction if you want to use something water-based like watercolors to color them remember that they are plastic so they need a layer of gesso first and then watercolors can come on top let's see the other frame it's still not dry so it's a good thing i prepped the other one beforehand but then this one is going to be with this center and this little pipeline fairy and these pipes i'm going to post a photo of the ready projects to my blog and i'm trying to remember to post them here on the group as well so you can then see after drying the whole thing what this one turned out to be like with him perching on top of the pipelines so that's kind of it thank you so much for coming today kiitoksia tulitte kiitos kati so just simple and easy little project only a little bit of trying time now making it so that i couldn't finish just one but well something to look forward to maybe <laughs> so thank you so much for coming if you have any questions just pop them into chat i will check them and keep an eye on on them and well have a nice evening or day or night <laughs> depending where you are thank you so much kiitokset hyvää iltaa bye bye Bye.